Sammet and Mike Newman, Karen and Dusty Bin, and the three, two, one go. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Good evening, everybody. Glad you could join us once again. And remember, it's three, two, one. You're on. Go on, try it. Give it a go. Go on, all of you. That's it. Go on. That's it. It's the numbers game that's a lot more fun than bingo. But here we are again with gags, girls, guests, gimmicks, and gifts galore. And we're also very lucky this week we have some very important parties again with us. For instance, over here from a football pools firm, we have half a dozen fun-loving girls. They're known as the Easy Six. <laughs> over here we have a group of masochists. They're here because they really enjoy a good laugh. <laughs> How about this for a scoop? Tonight with us we have the Arthur Scargill Appreciation Society. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we do. No, don't laugh. They're, they're somewhere toward the back of the audience. Well, I think they're in the back row. Well, actually, it's the third seat in. <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. Scargill. <laughs> And we also have some special guests. We've got a group of clergymen from Twickenham who are going on a fundraising tour from South America to the Caribbean in their Y fronts. Yeah, that's Vickers and Nickers from Twickers or from the Andes to the Indies in their unders. <laughs> The lovable lady with a likeable little out, that's Karen Palmer and Dusty Bin. How are you this week? I'm very well. He's smashing too. He is, but of course you must remember, Karen, he is our booby prize. <laughs> Anybody wins home, they, they take him a brand new dustbin. Well, you know, brand new dustbins cost a few pounds, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's true what they say, okay. where there's muck, there's brass. Yeah, and where there's trash, there's cash. So take him away. <laughs> Off we go. See you a bit later on, Karen. <laughs> right. Okay, folks. We're all here and ready to go, and the most important thing, our contestants are here who are going to play 3, 2, 1, so will you please welcome them? My couple are Leslie Clements and Kevin Willoughby from Cardiff in Wales. My couple are Susan Wells and Derek Rogers from Selly Oak in Birmingham. Capola, Lynn Malpass, and Philip Knowles from Wigan in Lancashire. Thank you, Mireille. Now then, Phil and Lynn, <laughs> Wigan in Lancashire, and I see Philip here that you have a, a BSc in mathematics. Yes, that's all right. I bet you only came on three, two, one because you thought you had that. <laughs> <laughs> that's lovely. A mathematics, a BSc, blooming super calculator, I'm sure. <laughs> no, not really. I believe though you're going to put all your knowledge to some good use soon, aren't you? Oh yes. What sure. are you going to do? I'm starting work as a computer programmer. Computer programmer? Oh, yes. Now, Lynn, what about you? Tell us what you do. I'm in graduate recruitment uh, for BNFL, British Nuclear Fuels. Nuclear Fuels? Yes. Gosh, that really is big business too, isn't it? It certainly is, How yes. do you feel about, we're taking all this Japanese waste, aren't we? How do you feel about that? It's good money. <laughs> it's good money, is it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's so much coming in, you know, every Japanese car's got a boot full. <laughs> <laughs> And Mrs. Thatcher says, don't be silly, we can't take that much. <laughs> anyway, let's get on with the show and on with your questions. We've got Annie St. John with the questions. Thank you, Annie. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, Ted, what? I've got a question for you for a change. And what's that? And I bet you can't answer it. I probably can't. Right? If Adam was the first man and Harry Lyme was the third man, who was the second man? I don't know, but I promise you, it wasn't me, Annie. Thanks very much. <laughs> See them a bit later on. Now then, our couples have selected one of three envelopes at random, so either of them could have any set of questions. Now, you know there are two rounds in the quiz, OK? We play for £10 for each correct answer in the first round. Whatever they win at the end of the first round is the amount they play for for each correct answer in the second. Now, at the end of the quiz, the couple with the lowest amount of money leaves us at that point. OK, the remaining two couples play the elimination game to see who goes through where all those big prizes can be won. Now, we'd like you to answer alternately, OK? It's Lynn first, Philip next. Three ways they can be stopped in the first round. If they make a mistake, repeat an answer, or if the time runs out, that's when they hear from one of our resident comedians. This week is the turn of Mr. Chris Hammett. Thank you, thank you, Ted Rogers there from Little Chalfon down in Bucks. Thank you, Ted. <laughs> Lovely little mover. He is, in fact, Ted's just moved house. And you should see it. It's a terrible place. Nothing worthwhile in it. You know, the other night, a burglar broke in, took a look round and left something. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha, 
Well, I've got news. You haven't seen my place. He's not kidding. <laughs> OK, good luck to your linen, Phil, playing for ten rounds. As you're playing for ten pounds a point, we don't give you one to start with in this round. We want you to give all ten answers. Get a ten, you've got a maximum of a hundred pounds. Now, we want names of types of fabric or cloth sold by the yard or metre in shops which are used for clothes or furnishing, which can be made from natural products. Now, we'll give you an example, calico, but you must not use that. So, fabrics or cloths made from natural fabrics, starting now. Cotton. Nylon. <laughs> Good evening. Here is a news flash. It's just been announced that the common market countries are to combine on producing ladies' fashions. The French are to make the dresses, the Italians, the slips, and the British are to have a hand in the blouses. <laughs> well, I'm afraid, Lynn and Philip, you made a mistake there, and so earlier on, it was the number two question, I think you said nylon. And we wanted, of course, natural products. Nylon is a man-made yes, man -made fabric, right? So, Annie, what did they score? Well, they only scored one, so mm. that's ten pounds. Ten pounds, <laughs> oh yeah. But still, you got ten pounds. A long way to go. A long way to go. OK. Thank you, Annie. Thank you very much indeed. Now, here we've got Derek and Susan. You're from Selly Oak in Birmingham. That's right, that's right. yeah. Oh, good. Now, De that's right. Did you hear that? That's right, yeah. It's like Benny. Good to know, that. <laughs> Do me a favour, will you, Derek? Will you, I'd like you to stand up for our viewers. Now, just have a look at Derek. Can you just stand up? I'll tell you why. I want you to look at him, because uh, he should be an encouragement to all of you slimmers. Now, I, I know, Derek, you used to be 17 and a half stone. Is that right? That's right, right yeah. And you're now down to what? About 12 and a half. They're 12 about, and a half. You know. We'll sit down again. Oh, that's Thank incredible. you very much. That, Thank you. <laughs> and it also says here that you lost, what, five stone in ten weeks. That's right, yes. Well, how did you do that? Well, we had um, the local pub where I used to drink. We had um, a little slimmers club. It started um, after New Year 1975. Uh, New, uh, New Year 1976, sorry. And we decided that we was all overweight, you know, because we used to get the um, Guinness down our necks, like, you know. And, uh, <laughs> so we decided we'd have a slimmers club. Well, six of us joined, and every Sunday morning we used to weigh in. We used to weigh in on, on the scales, and we used to drink things like uh, slim line um, tonics and things like that, you know. <laughs> and I never asked. <laughs> That's incredible. Fancy going to the pub, though, to lose weight. <laughs> it's about as sensible as making Colonel Sanders the patron saint of birds, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, Sue, what do you do? What's your job? I'm a book bookkeeper. A bookkeeper? And, bookkeeper. And, and who do you work for? Um, a small estate agent near Sally Oak. Oh, that's a big business, too, these days, isn't it? Estate agents, yeah. my goodness me. One thing, you've got to protect your house these days, and I've got the greatest thing for that. I've got an Alsatian, and I feed it garlic. Now it's bark's worse than it's bite. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Knocks you out, it really does. OK, so, and Derek, we're going for ten pounds for each correct answer. We want names of metal cooking pots and pans which are used on the top of a stove. Now, we don't want names which denote the material they're made of. We'll give you an example, chip pan, but you must not use that. So, names of metal cooking pots and pans on the top of a stove now. Frying pan. Milk pan. Um. <laughs> Stew pan. Poaching pan. Thank you. <clears throat> by Joe, by Joe. The other day, my little Diddy Granny, my little Diddy Granny phoned up the council. She said, can you help me? My toilet's blocked up. The man said, we'll put somebody on it right away. She said, don't do that, you'll make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, Susan and Derek, you ran out of time there, of course. Uh, you, got, you could have had omelette pan or casserole, pressure cooker, skillet, roasting pan, steamer. But Annie, how did they score? <laughs> Susan and Derek scored four, which is 40 pounds. 40 pounds? <laughs> oh. Here we've got Leslie and Kevin, and you are from uh, Card uh, Cardiff. 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 I love the way they say that. <laughs> a lot of mates down there. Listen, and, and you're for, uh, it's um, Leslie that's from Kliger. Kriger. Kriger. I thought I, I had a word with her. I said, I'm sure it's Kriger. She said, oh, no, it's Kliger. Anyway, I can say flantricent. Oh, and plan for second, good. but I think I better hold it there. <laughs> anyway, Kevin, you're a civil servant. Yeah? Yes. 
I think oh. I do. No, it's not true what they say about civil service. It's not it? true. No, we no, work very hard. They work as hard as everybody else. We do. <laughs> well, so it is true what they say about civil service. <laughs> What sort of work do you do then, Leslie? What? I'm a civil servant too. Oh. <laughs> We're surrounded by them here tonight. And then what, what do you do? Um, I'm a clerical officer in the Royal Mint in Lanchison. The Royal Mint? Yes. Well, that's the only place that's got more money than we have. <laughs> that's marvellous. I know something about your product. I use it quite a bit. Now, tell me, does, does your own work ever get mixed up with your own money? <laughs> no, no. I read recently they were going to make a new 20 pence piece. But I think that's a waste of time. We've already got one, haven't we? The 50 pence piece. <laughs> Can we have them? Thanks a lot, Ellie. OK, so you're going to go for £10 for each correct answer. And again, it's a good luck to you. We want types of building tradesmen you may need to call to come to your house to keep it in good repair. Now, we'll give you an example, a plasterer, but you must not use that. So types of building tradesmen to call to repair your house now. Carpenter. Roof tiler. Painter. Electrician. Glazier. Cast mm. maintenance man. Um, upholsterer. Talking of houses, hey, Maggie Thatcher's getting very good at the old back chat now, isn't she? Eh? Oh, marvellous. Yesterday, Jim Callahan stood up. He said. Can the Prime Minister tell us, after several months of Tory misrule, where does the country stand on unemployment? Quick as a flash, she said, same as when you were in power, Jim, in the dole queue. <laughs> <laughs> well, Leslie and Kevin, you did make a mistake there. Of course, you said upholsterer. Well, you wouldn't call, call an upholsterer to keep your house in good repair. <laughs> if a spring goes, you've got to send it to him. <laughs> There's a few more you could have said, like uh, bricklayer, plumber, Builder, but you can think of all of these afterwards. Yes. So, uh, Annie, how did they score? Leslie and Kevin answered six, so they win sixty pounds. So, at the end of the first round, we've got couple number one, that's Lynn and Philippa, on ten pounds. Couple number two, Derek and Susan, on forty pounds. But in the lead at the moment, couple number three, Leslie and Kevin, sixty pounds. OK, Phil and Lynn, just with £10, and this is the more difficult round. Thank you, Annie. <laughs> now, it's slightly different here. There's only two ways they can be stopped, remember. That's if they make a mistake or if they uh, run out of time. we still like you to answer alternately. But I will ask you the questions individually, and if you don't know the answer, just say, don't know. Go on to your partner with the next question, all right? Now then, £10 each correct answer. This is about women who have taken leading roles in famous comedy series on television. We'll give you the series. We want you to give us the starring actress. Now, In Loving Memory has Thora Heard, so In Loving Memory has... Thora Heard. Rising Damp. Don't know. You're Only Young Twice. Don't know. Life Begins at 40. Don't know. The Good Life. Um... Oh, don't know. Maggie and Her. Don't know. Man About the House. Are you being served? My favourite woman on television is definitely Anna Ford. Oh, I think she's smashing. And I love the way they have a giggle at the end of the news. Do you like that? Oh, I do. Last night she said, At Guy's Hospital in London this morning, a woman gave birth to nine piglets. Police are still looking for the swine that did it. <laughs> I'm afraid, Phil, and <laughs> what can we say there? None you did know at all there, really. Rising Damp, of course, that was Francis de la Tour. You're only young twice, you could have had Pat Coombs or Peggy Mount. Life Begins at 40, could Rosemary Leach. The Good Life, you could have had Penelope Keith or Felicity Kendall. Maggie and her, Irene Handel, Julia McKenzie. Man About the House, there were three. Youth of <laughs> Choice, Sally Tomset, Paula Wilcox. So what have they scored then, Annie? Well, I'm afraid Lynn and Phil <laughs> still only have ten pounds. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Annie. Now we've got uh, Susan and Derek here on £40 for each correct answer. <clears throat> How are you going to get on this time? Now, this question is about famous couples whose names are usually bracketed together. For instance, there's Adam and Eve. So, famous couples, and we'll start you with that one. Adam and... Eve. Anthony and... Cleopatra. Samson and... Delilah. Achis and... Don't know. Napoleon and... Josephine. 
Abelard and... Don't know. Tristan and... Don't know. Paris and... Helen? Tarzan and... Jane. Paramus and... Don't know. Good evening. We've just had news of a new show business venture. Ronnie Corbett and Charlie Drake are going into partnership. They're thinking of opening a nightclub with topless waitresses, but Ronnie Corbett isn't sure yet, as the overheads could be enormous. <laughs> Well, Derek and Susan, there was just four there you uh, didn't know. There was It's Achis and Galatea, Abelard and Eloise, Tristan and Isolde, and Pyramus and Thisbe. So, Annie, what did they score? Susan and Derek scored six, which means they have 240 pounds. 240 pounds. <laughs> well done. Well done. Thank you, Annie. And here we have Leslie and Kevin on 60 pounds for each correct answer. So, good luck to the two of you. This question is about actors and actresses who've acted many times together in films and whose names are frequently linked. We'll give you the name. We want you to give us the name of the actor or actress most closely associated with that name. Now, Rock Hudson has made several films with Doris Day, so that's the one we'll start you with. Rock Hudson and... Doris Day. William Powell and... Don't know. Jeanette MacDonald and... Don't know. Jack Holbrook and... Don't know. Spencer Tracy and... Catherine Hepburn. Greer Garson and... No, I don't know. Ginger Rogers and... Fred Astaire. Lauren Bacall and... No, I don't know. Richard Burton and... Elizabeth Taylor. Woody Allen and... <laughs> films. This woman walked into the hairdresser, she said. Hey, you, she said. You with the scissors. She said, I want you to make me look like Barbara Streisand. So he hit her on the nose with a dryer. <laughs> well, Leslie and Kevin, uh, there were six there you didn't know. William Powell, of course, was associated with Myrna Loy, Jeanette MacDonald, Nelson Eddy, Jack Hulbert, Cicely Courtnidge, Greer Garson, Walter Pigeon, or Ronald Coleman, Lauren Bacall, of course, Humphrey Bogart, Woody Allen, Diane Keaton. So, Annie, how have they scored at the end of the second round? Well, Leslie and Kevin answered four correctly, which means they also have £240. <laughs> so, at the end of our quiz, we have couple number one, Lynn and Phil, on £10 only, couple number two, Susan and Derek, on £240, and also Kevin and Leslie on £240, joint leaders. <laughs> That means, of course, Phil and Lynn, we do have to say goodbye to you, unfortunately, because the tough one, I think you'll agree, folks, was that second question in the first round, the man-made fibers, <laughs> it was natural furnishings, really, you said nylon. What a shame. Just ten pounds. But here it is. Karen, here's your ten pounds. All in singles to make it look bigger, you know. <laughs> and there's your ceramic dusty bin. Thank you. Thanks Thank you for okay. coming on the show. Thank you. Good night. Well, we'll be back in just a couple of moments, ladies and gentlemen, with the other couples playing the elimination game to see who gets a chance for the really big prizes. We'll see you in a couple of moments. Three, two, one. Don't go too far away. <laughs> Welcome to part two, ladies and gentlemen, where our remaining two couples are about to play the elimination game. Would you believe we had joint winners with 240 pounds at the end of our quiz? Now, the theme of this week's show is the battle of the sexes. And our game is a dressing up game. Because if you look, both of our couples have got a dummy. And it's not me, I can tell you that. <laughs> and they also have a basket with assorted ladies' clothes. Now, on the first whistle, we want you fellas to start dressing the dummy, all right? Ladies, you handle the clothes. On the second whistle, change places with your partner. Ladies, dress the dummy. Fellas, handle the clothes. Third whistle will stop and add up the scores. Now, you'll score a point for each garment you actually get onto the dummy and for each suspender, fastened, and button also fastened, all right? Right. Karen is here with the whistle. You know what you have to do. Good luck to you. Three, two, one. Change place. 
Ladies, you dress the dummy. Fellas, you handle the clothes. Just hold it there, and would you like to come down here and we'll up the scores? <laughs> see how well you did. <laughs> I don't think they were very... Would you like to come down here? Come here and let's see how well you did. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Let it all hang out. Now listen. <laughs> all right then, Patsy, how did Kevin and Leslie score? Well, Leslie and Kevin scored three. Three? Wow. <laughs> okay. Again, how about Derek and Susan? Susan and Derek scored seven. Seven! Oh! Congratulations! Lovely. Well done. That means you've got the chance to go through and win those big prizes and the dustbin. Remember that. Unfortunately, Kev and Leslie, we do have to say goodbye to you right now. But there's the money you won in the quiz. £240. The ceramic dusty bin. Your photo frame. And the photograph is already in the post. Wouldn't it nice, ladies and gentlemen? Take care. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would you like to go on the corner there? And would you like to stand just here? There we are, Sue. And right here, Derek Sand, nice and tight. That's it, so we can see. I think by now you know what goes on here, don't you, eh? Right, the money from the quiz, that's yours. We're going to give you that after the show. Well, as you know, we have five sketches, and there are five prizes, four terrific ones. And there could or could not be a car on the show. You know we don't have a car on the show every week this year. You know that. Because once we got down to the last one, if the car hadn't gone, we knew that was the car, so that's why we've changed the rule there. But there is the dustbin you've got to try and avoid. Win him, you've got a brand new dustbin on your hand, all right? OK, good luck to the two of you. We're going to have our first sketch now. As I said, the theme is the battle of the sexes. Love and romance, you know, the eternal triangle. It's just like the Bermuda Triangle, only more men get lost in it. <laughs> Most girls want to meet a man, get married and have children. Happens to lots of girls. Not necessarily in that order, but it happens to them. <laughs> they say that women have better memories than men. That's nonsense. And if I could remember who said it, I'd tell them. <laughs> anyway, we're going to see now man at his wily best as the hunter. Good morning, Rosemary. Good morning, sir. May I say you're looking absolutely scrumptious today. <laughs> your nails, Mr. Pendergast, please. Don't you like my nails, Rosemary? The only thing wrong with your nails is that they are at the other end of your hands. <laughs> and if you're going to them there every day of the week, you've got to grow them faster. I can't keep filing your fingertips. Do you know why I come in here so often, Rosemary? It's because I'm crazy about you. You can't turn me down again. How about dinner tonight, eh? Hmm? I'm married, Mr. Pendergast, and so are you. Well, it's no obstacle nowadays. Just means we both had plenty of practice, eh? <laughs> Besides, my wife doesn't understand me. Oh, all the men say that. No, in my case, it's absolutely true. Why? She's Polish. <laughs> no, I can assure you, Rosemary, my marriage wasn't four weeks old before it reached the twin bed stage. Well, that's nothing. A lot of married people feel for separate beds. Yes, but mine was in Sunbury, hers was in St. John's Wood. <laughs> Go on. Say you'll come out with me just this once. I keep telling you I'm a married woman. Well, phone your husband up. Tell him you're going out with a girlfriend or something. Go on. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? He's shaving you. Ooh. <laughs> Who's that? Well, it's not Al Jolson, is it? <laughs> well, Chris, look, what are you going to leave here for the uh, clue? I'm going to leave a rail ticket to Sunbury. Mm -hmm. There you are. You think about that while I get the card out. And <clears throat> this is your clue. If you're going out for 40, you'll find it simply flies. All we do is give the clue and then lay on the prize. Hey, Derek, Sue, what do you think? Any idea? Well, not at the moment. Uh, Travel, maybe. Yes, we're well, going up for 40. Well, you're Probably thinking about it straight away. Yeah. That's good. All right, Chris, I should go and have the shave if I'm doing that. Merry Christmas! <laughs> oh, I do! <laughs> oh, dear. 
<laughs> right, well, Chris has just brought that one in. And as you know, at the end of each sketch, you know, we do get the character come here, leave you a clue, read the rhyme like that. When you have three on the table, I ask you to reject one. The last one is the prize that you take home with you tonight. Now we're going to have another sketch, so start looking. It's not always the battle of the sexes, you know. I mean, sometimes it's strategic maneuvers. Or as it's better known, courting. <laughs> Do you know my dad versed me very well in the ways of wooing? He said, now look, Ted, remember, courting is an art. So get at it and court. But don't get caught at it. <laughs> he said, there are two kinds of girls you should take up. Those that say yes, and those that don't even wait to be asked. <laughs> Here we find out another courting couple. They're finding out all about each other. So have a look at these. think I'm attractive? Hmm. Am I the most attractive girl you've ever loved? Hmm. Is my hair the, the softest you've ever touched? Hmm. Like spider spun gossamer in the early morning dew? Hmm. Are my eyes the deepest brown you've ever seen? Hmm. And as clear as a spring morning? Hmm. Oh, Timothy. Will you love me longer than eternity? Mm-hmm. Till the stars fall out of the sky. Mm-hmm. And the rivers and the oceans run dry. Mm-hmm. Oh, Timothy, you say the sweetest things to me. Huh? Fourteen across is romantic. <laughs> Thank you. Lovely to see you, Jenny, as Thank always. You, Thank you very much. And what are you going to leave as the clue? Well, the clue is actually the newspaper. Uh huh. That is the clue. Okay. Now, listen, Jenny, I'll tell you one thing. I mean, I've seen your many Benny Hills, of course, and many, yes. many things. Films, TV, the lot. But I do love that Master Spy series you oh, do thank you. with thank Bill you. Franklin. Yeah. Has that done anything for you? Oh, yes. I've had um, an offer of work in Russia. TV? Oh, no. KGB. <laughs> Shouldn't have asked, should I? It really is nice to see you. And have you got a rhyme for these people, too? Yes, I have indeed. It's something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. You may well hear the doorman say, party's over, rolls away. Mm. Now then, Derek, mm. Sue, mm. how about that? Well, it could be a car, couldn't it? Rolls away. <laughs> yes, it well, then again, if the party was over... Well, you don't think it was a roll, do you? No, no. <laughs> Give away cars. Not, not, not that big. You know, 40 grand cars. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, can we say thank you to the lovely Jenny Lee Wright? Thank you, Jenny. And, of course, you probably noticed Derek and Sue there, Dougie Brown, in that last sketch. Well, of course, Dougie will be with us in just a moment or so. We're going to have one more sketch before you have to make up your mind about rejecting one of them. Now, they say the female is deadlier than the male, especially in the insect world, and that's very true, because when the battle of the sex is there, death... Could, well, it does, it leads to death, because uh, sometimes after sort of uh, lovemaking, I mean, the female actually kills the male. Imagine that in human life. Wake up on your honeymoon and find the missus spraying salt and pepper on your big toe. <laughs> or worse than that, putting your head between two slices of bread. <laughs> Us men haven't got a chance, as Dougie will now tell you. No, I don't want to fall in love, mate. <laughs> no, I do not. Cost a ruddy fortune. Not that I haven't got an eye for a good-looking young bird, like. Mmm. I'll tell you which eye it is. It's this eye here, look, this one. Now, this one, this one couldn't care less if she's good-looking or not. This is my, things are getting a bit desperate. Any old banger will do I. <laughs> I'm going blind in this one. <laughs> now, with that falling in love, mate, that's, it's a right rip-off. It is, I mean, what have you got? If you start falling in love, you first of all, you've got your taking her own bit, haven't you? Yes! Be quiet when I'm talking to you. You've got your taking her own bit, then you start having to pay for affairs, then you start buying her presents, then you take her to the flicks five nights a week. Seven nights a week if she's ugly. <laughs> I went out with an ugly one once. Oh, she used to model for shrapnel. <laughs> then you've got to start. It's all hunger, isn't it? Will you please buy me a wimpy? I want to go to the hamburger place. Get me a wimpy. Then you trips down the coast at the weekend, don't you? Got a creep round the mother and father at Christmas time, buying ounces of tobacco and, and potted plants. Tobacco for a mother, the potted plant for a father. <laughs> Mind you, you see, You've also got your, it itching the wallet, doesn't it, you see? It's itching the wallet. I mean, you've got double everywhere you go. Cost of old teeth ups, you know? It's expensive. <laughs> Don't you believe that two can live as cheaply as one? Oh, no, mate. If two could live as cheaply as one, the government would make you pay a VAT and your marriage licence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then you've got the mortgage. 
Got the mortgage on the house, haven't you? Furniture? I want a coloured telly. You've got a coloured telly. It's a brown one. Shut up. That's how you treat them. <laughs> <laughs> you pay for the house. You've deposits all on your furniture. Oh, you spent 4,000 quid just for one bit of crumpet. It's not on, you know. So you better be good for that money. <laughs> Why can't we be like the beasts of the field, eh? I mean, when did you last see a pigeon chatting up a female bird, buying a bag of nuts in Trafalgar Square or at Pilar? It's not on. You see, with the birds and the bees and the beasts, it's all down to the natural mating call in season, isn't it? You've got a ruffle of the red feathers, a quick mating dance, and then the call. Ha ha ha! Now, if only humans. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> hey, I think it works. I must have cracked it. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Hello, sailor. <laughs> no, I haven't got an eye for this one. I'm going. <laughs> You. Lovely to see you again. I managed to escape. You did. <laughs> There's your clue. The sailor's cap. The sailor's Hello, cap. Hello, sailor. Listen, nice to see you again, because you know Doug was with us for a while last year, but since then, you've gone from serious to serious. Yeah, I've gone more serious yeah. each time, yes. <laughs> yes I'm going to keep coming back until the check for the first show goes through. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how true that is. Hey, Doug, you want to read the rhyme for these people? Yes, most certainly. Here's your rhyme. Um, you're looking for a place to honeymoon. You want a home of your own. If you haven't got the money soon, you want to float alone. Mm. Now, that means that absolutely be nothing to you, does it? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to you. think about it now. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Dougie Brown. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Very much. OK, you've just heard that from Dougie. Any ideas what that could be? Uh, a cruise, maybe? Well, there you go. Float, well, float I, alone. Uh -huh. um, float a bit of bread. Houseboat. Yeah. Well, I can <laughs> read this one. Houseboat. <laughs> Rolls-Royce houseboat. You don't want much this week. I can read this again. This came from Chris, the first sketch. Or I can read you this, which Jenny Lee Wright brought in. Which one do you want to hear again? Uh, well, be like this. I well, think... We, uh, <laughs> newspaper, do you think? Well, I've got a feeling the newspaper might be uh, rubbish. Which Could one do you want to hear? Yes, you can hear this. Chris brought this and it says, If you're going out for 40, you'll find it simply flies. All we do is give the clue and then lay on the prize. So that was from Chris. Huggies just brought that in. Because that Let's... could be a car, couldn't it? Rolls. I know it's after the party in the newspaper. You wrap all your rubbish in the newspaper. Okay, then. Yeah. The boss says it's the first one. No. It's funny. <laughs> well, you're, you're changing your mind now, are you? No, that one. The first you want one, to reject yeah. this yes. one? Yes. Chris brought this in. OK, you're going to reject the rail ticket. If you're going out for 40, you'll find it simply flies. All we do is give the clue and then lay on the prize. OK. Well, did, <laughs> did you think, in fact, you did, we meant 40 miles an hour? Well, have a look at this. Come with me. Right, OK. No, we... Uh, we didn't mean 40 miles an hour, just come and stand here. We meant 40 winks. And the time simply flies when you lie on this beautiful Italian adjustable double bed. Oh, Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh. It's really it has everything. It's got lamps, it's in suede, it's king size, it has a digital clock and a radio. Well, go and have a look at that, will you? Get up. <laughs> what do you want to get up? Listen, you're not married yet. Don't think about getting in there. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going away just for a couple of minutes. We'll be back with more prizes. We've got the bin to go. Remember that. See you on 3, 2, 1. Don't go too far away. Part three, ladies and gentlemen, where our remaining couple from Selly Oak in Birmingham have just rejected a fabulous bed with every gimmick you can think of in it. And it was, of course, a king-size bed at that. But uh, whether they had room for it in the new home, we don't know yet. But we're going to have a song right now. Nowhere has the battle of the sexes been more promoted than in song. Composers have used it as a medium to really pour their hearts out. And here, singing a supermodern love song, is a supermodern singer, the lovely Marion Montgomery. <laughs> Love is in the air, I can feel it all around. Love is in the air, everywhere. 
every sight and every sound And I don't know if I'm being foolish Don't know if I'm being wise But it's something that I must believe in And it's there when I look in your eyes Love is in the air In the whisper of the trees Love is in the air Ladies and gentlemen, it was smashing, of course, Thank as you. ever. And mm -hmm. Marion, I do happen to know that's a track from your latest LP, isn't that's it? Right, that's Marian right, that's right. Marion Montgomery on stage. That's right, on stage in all glorious colour. Hey, you love it. <laughs> on the it. album cover, I might say. <laughs> what do you have as, a, as the clue, anyway, Marion? Aha. Uh -huh. The clue is a sweetie. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. That is. Uh, to prove it, it's sweet. It's, real nice. it's good. And do you have a rhyme for them, too? Yes, I do. When you get married, don't travel far. Just take it easy and stay as sweet as you are. I'm sure they will. <laughs> Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Mary Montgomery. Thank you, Mary. Okay, it's rejection time again, Derek. We've got, uh, you've just heard that. I can read these two, one of these two again. That well, came from Dougie Brown and the paper from Jenny Lee Wright. Well, we, we thought that the, the, the actual sailor's hat mm -hmm. with the wives that be, might be a cruise. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would be might be a cruise. Yeah. <laughs> I think the sweet may be a sweet, a three-piece sweet, so it's take it nice and stay easy. Stay at home, stay at stay home. Stay at home, right. yeah. Now, with the paper, we mm -hmm. thought, what do you do with the paper what you've read? Mm -hmm. You throw it away. Throw it away. And yeah. it says in... Could we hear that one again, please? Yes, you? I can. I can read that. Is that the one you'd like to hear again? Yes, please. All right, this one said, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. You may well hear the doorman say, party's over, rolls away. Well, so. with um, old and new, I don't mm -hmm. know what you throw away, what's new, but um, the bin is blue, isn't it? Uh, the bin is, yeah. Well, he uh, might have a bit of blue and on it. And it's got wheels. But when you it, roll what, it what did you think the last thing was, the bed? Can I remind you about oh, that? Yeah. Well, the bed, I think the bed was absolutely beautiful, but um, I don't think we're going to go to that house, to be honest. <laughs> I don't think we're going to go in the I room. Just said that. Bigger than the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it, just getting married too, you're getting lost in that. Isn't it? <laughs> anyway, one's got to go then. What is, what's it going to be? The newspaper. The newspaper, please. Yeah, you seem pretty unanimous on that. All right, then, you're definitely we going might to... We get it wrong together. <laughs> <laughs> going to reject the newspaper. Okay, then. Jenny brought this in. In rejecting the newspaper, well, what have we got on this show that's old but new to the show that we can lend you because we can't lend it to you, actually, because we want it next week? You'd be blue if you won it. Well, the party's not over as our booby prize rolls away, Dusty Bin. <laughs> Come on, see Stand round there. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, oh, isn't he lovely? Isn't he marvellous? They all say that when they've elbowed him, you know what I mean? <laughs> He's not that bad, though, old Dusty. He's even brought you some flowers there. 
If I can get him out of his hands, there you are. How's that? There you go. It's been rejected. Ray, he has to go away. Back he goes. Let's get back here to the table. Well, you were right, huh? You really were right there. Right from the off, you thought that was the bin. And it was the bin. Now we're going to have our last sketch, then we'll have to reject something else. The battle of the sexes, you know, makes you think of the great romantic couples like Caesar and Cleopatra, Romeo and Juliet, Adam and Eve, the boss and his secretary. <laughs> the boss is always saying to his secretary, now look, put your notebook down and come and have a look at my pad. <laughs> and it's then that that cute little blonde, who doesn't know her way from A to B, and is always minds her P's and Q's, knows about everything from A to Z. Anyway, any boss knows that there's plenty more fish in the typing pool, as we shall now see. Who? The wife? No, not now, not now. Mm -hmm. Clowns doing that to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> ah, Miss Goulding. Mm -hmm. I've been watching you some time now, Miss Goulding. Oh, but I only started yesterday, sir. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> like I say, I've been watching you some time, Miss Goulding, and I've come to the conclusion I'd like you to be my uh, private and confidential secretary, Miss Goulding. Oh, sir. Oh, do you think I have the qualifications? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Miss Goulding. Now, the thing is this, Miss Goulding. Um, will your boyfriend be pleased with this uh, promotion? Hmm? Oh, I haven't got a boyfriend, sir. Oh, good. Oh, Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. You do surprise me, Miss Golding. Uh, Miss Golding, uh, what I want to do is this, you see. I want... Uh, I want to... Uh, I want to take you with me this weekend on a private and contravention trip to uh, Brighton. <laughs> I know that sounds a bit silly, but... Uh... Oh, there's nothing silly about Brighton, sir. I love it. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> Not that you'll see very much of uh, Brighton, Miss Golding, because you'll be hard at work most of the time, flat in your back. Uh, flat out. Uh, flat out. Uh, back out. Back out. Uh, you can back out, Miss Golding, if you want to. Oh, oh, but I don't mind a bit of hard work, sir. Good, 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 good. Now, what I want you to do is this. I want you to book a double room at the Imperial in the name of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Don't be alarmed, Miss Golding. It's only a cover, you see. Industrial espionage. <coughs> it's rampant, you know, Miss Golding. And if United Hotels got wind of this, it would blow whole deal out the window. You'd be out of a job, Miss Golding, and so would I. Secrecy, secrecy as old times, Miss Golding. Oh, yes, sir, I do understand. Good. Now, book the room. We leave immediately. Oh, oh, oh sir, can I just ring my mum? You're bringing your mother. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Can I ring her? Only she's expecting me home Let's tonight. Make, but of course, of course, oh, mate, of course. Nice. Yes, secrecy. Make it suitable. Excuse me, Golding. Oh, yes, sir, mm -hmm. of course. Mm -hmm. Hello, mum. Oh, hello, love. No, I won't be home tonight. I'm having a dirty weekend with the old groper. Oh. <laughs> What's going to be the clue then, Michael? Now, Chad, I have here, it's, it's a marriage certificate, actually. Mm -hmm. Yes, marriage certificate. There we are. See, and how did the... Uh, uh, huh. It went that well, did it? Yes, it did. The weekend in Brighton. <laughs> oh, very nice, Miss Golding. A nice woman, Miss Golding, yes. Really? Sort of a woman you could take home to your mother. Oh. Mm, if you could trust your father. <laughs> okay, and how about the rhyme? Now, the rhyme here... The rhyme here is... Uh... <laughs> oh, oh, um, you'll need no chaperone in Brighton to accompany your sport. But if someone turns the light on, look out, you may get caught. Dun, da, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I'll leave that dead, all right? Thanks, Mike. Newman, ladies Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, he's just read you that. I can read one of these two again. Which one would you like to hear? Dougie brought that in, if I can remind you, and Marion Montgomery brought the suite. Well, what one would you like to hear? The hat, please. Just You'll hear the hat again. Please. Okay, Dougie brought this in. You're looking for a place to honeymoon. You want a home of your own. If you haven't got the money, you'll want to float alone. So we have three here again. One has to be rejected. And then I'll remind you we're down to the final two. Think about Brighton. Brighton. Motorish. They'd have a um, car or anything to Brighton, don't they? The, Do um... Okay, then. Well, we... We... Uh, I don't know. Remember at the top of the show, I did tell you, or well, halfway through, that we don't have a car each week. No, no, no. no. So, well, that's just a, a thing to bear in mind, that's yes, all. Yes, absolutely. Take any rejection there. <laughs> we'll reject that one. Right. Well, that's all right. You think? The hat. Yes? Yes. What do you reckon, Sue? Right. 
Okay. I'll throttle him later. Okay. <laughs> All right, you're going to reject yeah. Dougie's hat. It was worn by Felix Bonnet. Mm. Now, what, what have you rejected? Well, we did say float alone. Well, did you think that might be something to do with a mortgage? Well, it wasn't. In fact, it was something to do with floating. Have a look at this. You wouldn't float alone on this wonderful two-week Mediterranean cruise <laughs> from Southampton, stopping at Gibraltar, Parma, Naples, Barcelona, Lisbon, and Vigo in northern Spain before returning home. How about that for a holiday, huh? And he's here with the vouchers, all ready for you to go when you wanted to go. Two weeks, you'd have liked that, would you? Yes. yes. Have, you, have you ever been around the Mediterranean at all? No, no, no. no chance. Well, I have is about the promised <laughs> the Oh dear, well, it's a bit better than that, I can tell you. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. It's been rejected. Mm. Take it away. Thanks very much. Mm. Well, now we're down to the final two. Marion Montgomery bought this, and of course, Mike just brought that. Well, I can read both of them again. Would you like to hear them again? Yes, please do. Okay. Marion said, when you get married, don't travel far. Just take it easy. Stay as sweet as you are. And Mike said, you'll need no chaperone in Brighton to accompany your sport, but if someone turns the light on, look out, you may get caught. Sport. Sport in Brighton. Oh, there's a lot of sport in Brighton, as we've I'll just be... seen. I'll tell you what, if you sort out with you, I'll mess it up again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, take, we'll take a chance. Uh, do, you, do you want a lounge suite? <laughs> I'll tell you what, we'll reject the suite and we'll see what we've got there. What do you reckon, Sue? Sue, so, what do you reckon? Go on, this is a big decision oh. for the two of you to make. Yeah, we'll reject the suite. We reject the suite. No. Who wants we'll a suite anyway? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you get married, where are you going to sit on the floor? This is in Japan. You, know? you really do want to reject the suite? Yeah. yeah? Yes, yes. Yeah. All right, you're rejecting the suite. Marion brought this in. Okay, well, she was right. The clue was a suite. Now, will you come over here with me? Once again. <laughs> right, okay. Now, the rhyme said, stay as sweet as you are. So we couldn't have made it more clear. You were absolutely right. What you have would have won would have been this wonderful three-piece reproduction suite. Oh, Look at that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. She's just said we just brought a dining room suite in Regency. Look at that, oh. a nest of tables, a bureau, the lamp would have been yours, the, the picture as well. Oh, the three pieces, we couldn't get on the set, but there was a three-piece suite. Absolutely fabulous. And that's well over a thousand pounds, I can tell you. It's a beautiful prize, isn't it? Sorry, Pats, you've been rejected. Off we go. Oh. Oh, now let's go back to the table and see what you have. <laughs> okay, what's it gonna be on the table for you? This is the one. The sweet's got to go. I'll eat that later, I think. I'm going to read it again, see if you've got any idea. You'll need no chaperone in Brighton to accompany your sport, but if someone turns the light on, look out, you may get caught. So what do you think, Derek? Well, she think she said it was a week in Brighton. A week in Brighton? Well, we just offered you two weeks in the Mediterranean. I oh, know. <laughs> oh, I didn't reject that. Not no, really. well, you, you've not rejected. This is what you won tonight. OK. Well, did you think you may get caught? Well, you would have done with a week in Brighton. <laughs> and have you been? <laughs> because you have won our chaperone, or shall we say escort, yes, the star prize, the car! <laughs> Fantastic. Hey. Beautiful, huh? Nice to hear. Well, <laughs> well, at this rate, ladies and gentlemen, the show is going to be renamed to Cars on Friday. <laughs> it's been marvelous having these super people. The three couples were marvelous, and it's been great being with you once again. We look forward to seeing you next week. Have a nice week. Take care. Three, two, one. Good night, everybody.